Today's topic is simple waveforms. But before starting this video, let me say a couple of things. The waveforms we're gonna make throughout this video are not considered good sounding waveforms because of a problem called aliasing, which will be covered in the next episode. You might be wondering why am I making this video though? The reason is very simple. This will help us to familiarize with the DPD environment and it will give us the opportunity to talk about many interesting things. And I will show you how to start from basic waveforms and manipulate them with simple arithmetical operations. We already know how to generate sine tones with OSC. We can declare an initial frequency as a creation argument but what if I want to change this frequency on the run? I could use a float object, but it's not that handy. We have better options. What I want to use is knob. This is a graphical element. And if we take a look at the inspector, we can see minimum and maximum values. So I want this object to output values in the range 100, 1000. Then I can take the frequency, send it to OSC and finally route the audio to the output module. If you watched my previous video, you might say, why are you sending a control value to an audio inlet? Well, the thing is, there are some objects like OSC, for example, that can accept either float or signals. Always refer to the help file if you're not sure what value send to an object. That said, we could improve this frequency knob even further, because if you take a l listen to this oscillator, the frequency is not changing very smoothly, especially if you're moving the slider very quickly. So what we can do is we can use float to signal. We can define an interpolation time, 50 milliseconds. And let's have a listen right now. If you want to visualize the waveform, you can use an object called the scope, which is essentially an oscilloscope display. We can send the audio output from OSC and that's our waveform. Now the frequency is too high to properly visualize each cycle. So what we can do is we can change the range of this knob we can start from one hertz. Uh, I don't want to listen to this waveform anymore, so we can get rid of uh, output. And that's our sine wave. Starting from this sine tone, I now want to make a square wave. Before doing this, let's take a look at the scope inspector. And we can see how the signal range is normalized between minus one and one which is the default amplitude range for all digital audio signals. The first step to produce a square wave is to use an absolute object. As we can read from the help file, it passes non-negative values unchanged, but replaces negative ones with their positive inverses. So it folds negative values in the positive range. We can grab the OSC output and send it to the apps object and then to the scope. And as we can see from the display, we now have positive values only. At this point, we need to add a division at audio rate. A quick tip, if you want to insert an object into a pre-existing connection, you can grab your object, move it underneath the connection and select shift. Then you can release shift and your mouse click and it will automatically connect to the pre-existing cable. Now we need to divide the absolute value by the oscillator output and here we have our square wave. Every time the oscillator is in the positive range the square wave will produce one. On the other hand if oscillator is generating negative values the square wave will produce minus one. This is probably the principle used by the square object to produce square waves. So if we send the frequency to square and we grab its output, send it to the same scope, we can see that the waveform is identical. 
Let's talk about SOTUS waves. If you're a beginner, you probably have noticed quite of a confusion about this topic, and especially if you're um, programming with pure data, because of a very simple reason. PD, the vanilla version, doesn't have waveforms. The only waveform available is OSC. If you want to make a SOTUS wave, you have to do it yourself. In some learning resources online, there are some examples where they show how to use phaser as a SOTUS wave. Now, phaser is not technically a SOTUS wave. It looks like uh, a SO wave, but it is not. If we read its help file, we can understand how it is used for table lookup. To make it very easy, because we're going to talk about arrays, tables, and all these things later on in this course, but we can use a phaser to read numbers, values from an array. This is what phaser was designed for. But why can't we use phaser to produce sound? The reason is that phaser ranges from 0 to 1. Signals in this range are called unipolar signals. More precisely, a unipolar signal oscillates between positive or negative values only. But what is the problem about these unipolar signals? Well, if you remember from previous episodes, we introduced the concept of DC offset, which is an offset, a shift of the center position of the waveform. Since we don't want signals with a strong DC offset to be sent to our loudspeakers, we need to convert this phaser into a bipolar signal ranging between positive and negative values. To do so, we need to take the phaser output and multiply it by 2, so the absolute range is 2, and we can use a scope Come on, scope to visualize all stages. So here we have our unipolar phaser. Down here, the phaser going from zero up to two. And as we can see, it's going above the upper limit, which is set to one. So we need to subtract one. In this way, we bring down the waveform in the range minus one to one. And here we have a bipolar SOTUS wave. If we take a listen to this phaser, it won't sound like a good sounding um, SOTUS wave. So let's use output. Let's increase, let's delete these scopes. We can increase the frequency 100 Hertz. There are a lot of high frequencies, high harmonics and noisy frequency components. They are caused by these sharp discontinuities. And as for all the waveforms we're going to see in this episode, once again, they're not good sounding waveforms. They can be used as modulation source or control signals. Starting from this bipolar signal, I now want to create a triangle waveform with equal rise and fall times. What I can do is use abs, we already know how it works. And as you can see, we have a triangle waveform. The only thing is, it's unipolar. So we copy our times 2 minus 1. And down here, we have a bipolar triangle waveform. The techniques we've learned in this lesson are most likely the same one used by SO tilde and TRI tilde. But if we take a look at SO, uh, let's inspect the help file, we can see how the waveform is starting at a high value and falls down to its lowest value while our waveform has an opposite direction. If you want to change the waveform direction, so you want to flip the entire waveform, you simply need to multiply the waveform by minus one. 
Oops. And here we have the exact same waveform produced by. So, same goes for triangle. We can copy and paste this section. And here we have it. If you enjoy this series and you want to support it, the easiest way is by joining my Patreon page. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode. Ciao, ciao.